question. Uh, how many of you here know that um, who Google picked as their Hadoop distribution for their Google computing? Anyone? All right. <laughs> so it is, it is MapR. Now I would like to introduce uh, Key Hobson, uh, the senior principal, um, principal technical engineer at MapR to discuss about MapR and uh, Google Computing. Before we get started, I would also like to introduce uh, Ed. And Ed is pretty famous here and uh, he works for Google and he runs the uh, Hadoop user group, uh, the Washington DC Hadoop user group. They are one of our um, sponsors here. He's big on our loop and he's actually talking in Hadoop board in a couple of weeks. And uh, you can reach out to him if you have any questions on our loop. And uh, by the way, Booz Alan is hiring him. <laughs> hey everybody, so as was just said, I am Keith Bonesome, and I am a Senior Principal Technologist with MapR Technologies, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, MapR and how it relates to Google Compute Engine. It's not really a presentation on Google Compute, it's really more a presentation on MapR, but say a few words about Google Compute. First of all, this presentation is actually already going to be up, it's going to be up on the website right there if you want to look it up and type in that nice little URL. I probably should have used one of those short URLs from the earlier presentation, but I think that's enough. And uh, that's my contact information. If you want to reach me, I actually have responsibility for both federal and uh, East Coast as a sales engineer, so feel free to come talk to me. Now, let's just take a few quick words about Google Compute Engine. For those of you who don't know, you know, Google is basically opening up some of their internal infrastructure, and there's actually a number of different things they're doing. There's a presentation this morning about Google, Google App Engine. Um, this is actually a dimension where they're basically providing um, uh, virtual machines that you can run software upon, and, you know, Linux, obviously. <coughs> and what's really interesting about it is it's a uh, you know, virtualized public cloud, it, it avoids the usual on-premise stuff, What's cool about it though, and I, I, you know, Google didn't ask to say this, but I must point this out, it is spooky fast, right? I, so when I did these testing, I was actually spinning up 100 node clusters in two minutes. Right? That's not a bad speed. So it's really, really a very powerful model. I think Google's done a great job. It's actually remarkably easy to use. And I'm gonna give you a little taste of some of that. So first and foremost, if you're using the Google Compute Engine, there's this tool called GCUtil, which is a command line tool. And basically, it's your you know, gateway into Google Compute. Basically, you run GCUtil to request what are called instances, which are basically virtual machines in the Google Cloud. And uh, there's ways for you to uh, connect to that cloud over SSH. There's ways for you to define your own custom instances. So as you might expect, MapR is actually creating a custom image, which is basically MapR for Google Compute. Now, just as a backup point here, who here is familiar with what to do this? Uh, actually, most of you. All right, so I'm just going to be very, very brief then. So, you know, MapReduce was basically essentially invented by Google, right? It's kind of over here, right? And they basically um, popularized those ideas in some definitive papers they wrote. And then the Hadoop project is basically an open source implementation of what Google has done. It's not the same as what Google has done because they've never actually published what they really did. But um, we at least have this open source implementation which is very similar to what Google has done. And the key insight to Hadoop is hardware is cheap, scalability is king. Hadoop is all about lots and lots of cheap machines processing large amounts of data. That's the fundamental insight into Hadoop. And it's kind of a paradigm shifting technology. You know, um, traditionally people tended to have fairly small clusters or even one giant machine, very expensive hardware. Hadoop is very much a paradigm shift. It's, yeah, let's just have a thousand node clusters. That, that makes complete sense. And, you know, in some sense I would argue that that's actually one of the major reasons why Google has been so successful is actually this technology. We've essentially bent the cost curve for computing. Now, MapR, as a company I work for, uh, we are actually a distributor of Hadoop. So we have a Hadoop implementation. We're actually one of a, a few different commercial vendors. But we actually distinguish ourselves around a few dimensions, which I'll briefly highlight in this presentation. But essentially, it boils down to three things. We're easier to use, we're more dependable, and we're faster. And I'll actually explain what I mean by those three things in a minute. I've already told you what Hadoop was, so I won't repeat myself. Uh, I will point out that MapR is recognized as a technology leader. I think uh, the very fact that I'm standing here pretty much says that right there. 
you know, Google could have picked anybody to be their new distribution. I mean, they really could have, because they're Google. And they picked us. They made a conscious decision to pick us. And by the way, Amazon did the exact same thing. Who here's true of Amazon? You, you, no, really? <laughs> okay. So, anyway. So MapBar is available in the cloud with both Amazon and Google. The Google Compute Engine is still in beta, but I expect it to be talking in GA fairly soon. Here we have a bunch of partners. I'm not going to read this to you. It's kind of boring. We have lots of partners, lots of exciting people who are our friends. Uh, if you are doing on-premise, it's worth knowing that both uh, Cisco and HP are our partners. They actually have reference hardware platforms. So if you want to run MapBar in your data center, uh, both of those vendors will actually basically tell you this is what we work out as an ideal hardware platform for running out all. Now, just to back up again, so what exactly precisely is MapBar? So MapBar is a complete distribution of Hadoop. You know, we ship all the standard ecosystem components, I, Big, Easy, Scoop, what have you. And then we differentiate ourselves along a couple of key dimensions. The first area of differentiation is that we've implemented Management infrastructure. You know, with uh, stock to do from Apache, you pretty much have to edit XML files and things like that. Now, for a room full of programmers, that's probably a good thing. But for a lot of folks that are trying to run operational systems, that's really a pain. So we actually have a nice uh, graphical user interface for managing the Hadoop cluster. We also have command line tools as well as a REST-based interface. So if you want to write your own management tools, by all means, go for it. <laughs> Then on the bottom half is where I would argue is really our secret sauce. This is very much a distinguishing characteristic. We have actually re-implemented some of the core components of Hadoop to make Hadoop dramatically faster, much more reliable, and to a lesser degree easy to use. And I'll talk about that in a second. But a key element of that here is who here's used like EMC or NetApp? You heard of those companies? You know? So you've probably heard of this term, you know, enterprise class storage. There are certain expectations of quality of service. Well, if you have an EMC box or a NetApp box or what have you, there's an expectation of certain ways of protecting your data, things like snapshots. Oh, what if somebody actually deletes a file? I want to get a snapshot that was taken, I don't know, yesterday and bring back that data. There's also an expectation of things like mirroring. I want to replicate data between different data centers or different servers or what have you. And that is a requirement for quote enterprise class data. Well, Hadoop is actually dramatically larger than that. Like its Hadoop clusters typically have 10 or even 100 times more data than what I would call a traditional you know, EMC NetApp kind of environment. Why well, don't think they should have those same qualities of service? There's actually a, a, one of our competitors actually has a quote which I, I personally love. He says he doesn't know anybody who has a Hadoop cluster that hasn't lost at least a terabyte of data by accident. Oops, I accidentally deleted a terabyte of data. Right? You know, as a human being, that's more data than you'll generate in a lifetime. You just type as fast as you can. I don't understand why that's not, why that's acceptable. So with MapR, we provide snapshots, we provide mirroring, a bunch of other functionality that just makes it possible for you to protect your data. And I'll go into more depth in a minute. Uh, I also want to emphasize is that we are binary compatible with Hadoop. So we've actually had several customers, in fact, run out see, very close to where I'm standing. I can't remember exactly which way I'm the point. Uh, Comscore actually ported their um, cluster from another new distribution to MapR actually over the weekend. Just copied all the data, copied all the binaries, and it just keeps running. Although it's faster. Who here's heard of Accumula? Federal sector? Really? I'm surprised we're at point. So, Accumula is actually just a little reference thing I like to point out. Accumula was essentially HBase created by the NSA. So, basically, they read the same paper that the HBase implementers read. And there was HBase, which is the Apache Open Source Project, and then there's Accumulo, which was built by the NSA, which as of a few months ago, actually is also an open source project. The only thing I want to point out here is Accumulo, like HBase, is a very, very complicated, very complicated to do program. And we at Navar, without even, um, you know, not, not working with the Accumulo developers, we actually took the Accumulo distribution in binary form and ran it on Navar. You know, and I think that speaks volumes. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of lines of non-trivial code that runs on MapR because MapR is just to do. Why am I saying this so much? Because our competitors will tell you MapR is just to do, and that's just all the bench. Right? Now let me go back to the computer. This is really cool. So let's talk a little bit about how I would run a MapR cluster on Google Compute. Again, you use the happy GC tool, which I've already mentioned to you. 
But we're actually going to build some scripts. Now, I'm going to point out that what I'm showing you here is beta, the script the API compiled with when we finally ship. to give you a sense of how easy it's going to be. I want to start a Mavnar cluster. I have a machine type of whatever, machine types like how many disks you have, how much memory, things like that. And I want this many master nodes, this many slave nodes, and I hit enter. And then I wait one, two, maybe three minutes if it's a really bad day. Boom, we have a cluster. Wow, that was pretty amazing. I actually did this myself actually four or five times. And I, and the first time I did it, I thought it must have been a typing error because it was way too fast. No, it really does do this. So now you've got a spun up cluster, and then you can SSH to the cluster, uh, you can uh, connect to it using the Navbar admin console, you can run jobs, you know, all the stuff you would expect. The key value prop here, right, is you didn't have to buy anything. Right? You didn't have to buy any hardware, you didn't deploy any hardware, and perhaps most significantly, you didn't have to wait for hardware. Right? A lot of people, you know, they want to spin up a new cluster and they have to wait three months for procurement to actually acquire the hardware, deploy the hardware, set up the hardware. This is you have to wait three minutes. Right, kind of a very different model. And then if you stop the cluster, the cluster goes away, and Google stops building. I'm actually going to do a little demo of TerraSort. Those of you who don't know, TerraSort is actually sort of a standard uh, Hadoop benchmark. And what TerraSort did is if you generate a terabyte of data, specifically 10 billion 100 byte values, and then you sort them. Right? And if you remember back in basic computer science class, that's actually really hard. Right? You sort an array of 10, 000, I'm sorry, 10 billion. A non trivial problem. It's a very classic Hadoop benchmark. And I want to show you actually a video. Excuse me, I don't, I don't do live demos because that's really dangerous. But I'm going to show you a video of basically doing that on that bar in the Google computer. Hopefully, this will actually play. Let's see if it does. So I just want to show you this is actually our heat map on the right hand side. That's the map bar visualization of the status of the cluster. Green means basically everything's hunky dory. Oh, by the way, the nodes are basically idle. They have no work to do. So let's go ahead and start this off. We put this little play button. And on the left hand side here, my colleague actually started a script which is called which runs TerraSort. It's actually a very simple command. And there's TerraSort running. Look at that. That's a thousand, actually 1,200 node cluster. And what you're seeing there as the colors change is the work being moved out amongst the low nodes. Red nodes are obviously very busy. Brownish nodes are sort of less busy, but still busy. And then the few green ones, for whatever reason, aren't doing any work. And again, this is pretty much how Hadoop works. Look at what I've just done. I basically have this thing running on a thousand node cluster. And my code doesn't know anything about clusters. My, my code knows, oh, I read a file, and I spew out some stuff, and there we go. Right? It's all, this is all Hadoop doing all of this work for us. And again, because this is running on Navbar and Google Compute, I didn't even have to buy the hardware to do this. I'm just renting it from Google. But let's see, now I have to kill 40 more seconds. Let's see, what else can I tell you about this? So it's actually first doing the map phase, which I guess is finished now, and now we're in the reduce phase. For those of you who know a little bit about Hadoop, reduce tends to be a little less expensive than the map phase. You notice we have a lot more orange, a lot less red. But this is kind of showing you what's happening in Hadoop. And by the way, for those of you who work with executives who don't know anything about you know, technology, this is an awesome demo because they get this. They go, green means idle, red means busy. I see my stuff happening. I get that, I totally get that, I swear to you. Um, we've shown this to a couple of people who have no different skills whatsoever, and like, now I get what to do with this. Okay? Now, could program based upon that, but you exactly didn't don't understand how to program. You just don't understand how to say fancy words like Hadoop is scalable. Good enough. All right, so that's my demo. Now, here's the more interesting part of my demo, which hopefully will come back. Let's talk a little bit about what we actually just did. All right, let's see if my computer will do the right thing. There we go. Let's talk about what happened here. So, we actually rented a cloud from Google. Uh, in this example, we have uh, 1,256 servers with one disk each, total of 5,000 cores, and we just sorted 10 billion records in one minute and 20 seconds. You're not going to do that on your laptop. You're not going to do that on a cluster of 10 machines. That's going to take a really long time. To me, that really drives home the value to do. Now, I want to point out there's actually a benchmark out there of folks who have actually done this um, on the physical data center. And in their case, they had 11,000 cores, 5,000 disks, and 1,400 servers, and they finished in one hour and two minutes. So, my point isn't that you know, it's, quote, faster on Google Compute. My point is this I rented the hardware, I bought the hardware. Think about that for a minute. So, let's show that picture. 
Who here thinks it would be easy to buy 1,460 servers and rack mount them? Okay, even if you get the servers really cheap, you're talking a lot of money and a lot of time. I just showed you how to do it in Google Compute, right? So let's say, we'll be generous and say, three minutes for the cluster to spin up, one minute for the job to run, one minute for the job to spin down, that was five minutes. Right? That's a lot faster. You could literally do this tonight if you wanted to. Here's the cost number. This is a very generous cost number. All we're discussing here is the cost of the hardware. Right? $5,840,000. Who here has actually built out a physical cluster in, on anything? Right? You know about, like, you gotta buy racks, you gotta get power, you gotta hire people to rack stuff. It's very, very expensive and very time consuming. We didn't do any of that. We just said, Google will give us some computers. Here's what it actually cost us at the uh, Google billing rate $16. <coughs> now, in total honesty, that's for 80 seconds. Google's actual billing chunk is a one hour, they won't go for less than an hour. So we actually really had to spend $728 versus $6 million. Now, Fully honesty, right? You could keep running this cluster and do other stuff, the Google cluster's gone, but depending on the problem you're trying to solve, that may be fine. You know, maybe you're gonna upload a bunch of data to Google and you're gonna do some processing that takes, I don't know, a day, and you shut the cluster back down. Done, right? I don't have to keep paying for that hardware that I don't want. All right, back to MapR. So, this is actually a picture of the MapR management console which basically shows you how you can very easily manage a new cluster. This is actually oriented towards management scale, and this is actually that heat map you saw earlier, as part of the whole overall console. In this particular picture, I'm showing you the status of a 160-node cluster. So as administrator, you quickly glance at that, and guess what? Red means bad, okay? In fact, what that probably means, given that all those reds together are actually in the same rack, probably means something wrong with my rack. Probably my switch has failed or something like that. Orange and gray are basically different levels of not quite okay. And you can actually click through there and actually click under the node and it'll tell you why it chose colored orange. Why it colored orange? Because it was kind of busy running out of IO capacity, maybe it was low on memory, maybe it had some CPU issues. But basically the real point is as administrator, quick glance, another status of my cluster. Now I want to point out, and I'm betting you can't read this, but take my word for it, right there in the upper right hand corner is a sentence that says, savings 23%. For those of you who used to do, how many of you have actually leveraged compression in You know, you have to do special configuration, maybe you write some code, you compress your data, because you know, storage is expensive, well, relatively, so you want to compress your data. Now far, we actually do transparent compression in our code, behind your back. You don't have to write a line of code, you don't have to configure anything, it's all compressed. So what that's actually telling the sysadmin is, you've actually saved 21% because